Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. We're back on the grind to hopefully continue progress on version 2.0 of our Plants vs. Zombies cross vampire survivors mashup, which with the change in direction has been going really well. It may have taken us like 10 episodes, but we're finally on track with the fusing of the two games into one. By splitting the plant units into two different camps, we've been able to better define gameplay and features that utilize both games mechanics. And while it's required a lot of creative thinking, the process has been extremely fun and challenging. But before we continue, remember to leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any future progress. And with that said, let's get to today's progress. Our glossary of plant data has been revamped with new and relative data we'll need moving forward. Currently, we've got entries for plant name, a description, base damage value, and two very important classifications. The first is their literal class, which determines what type of plant it is, active or passive. Active being plants that can be placed by the player into the game world, and passive which will either be placed automatically like the potato mine that did last episode, or something that simply acts on its own, like it would in a typical bullet heaven game. The second classification is time. All plants codons are now determined by their time class, which is something lifted directly from Plants vs Zombies. So class 0 is the fastest cooldown at 3.75 seconds, and the longest is 100 seconds. It should be noted that all this data is still temporary for the time being, especially the times. This change in the glossary data means that plants can now deal unique damage values, which are now passed on in the many different ways that the enemy can take damage. This change also means that plant timing is off in regards to existing code that we've transferred over, but more on that later. Now the player is no longer immortal. Indeed, a health system has been put into place, including a hurt player function, which itself features a few new items added this episode. The first being a function to return if a certain plant has already been added to the player's arsenal. In the case of them the player we're checking for the newly added pumpkin plant. In PvZ, the pumpkin tanks damage for plants, but in our version, it tanks damage for the player. So the pumpkin acts just as the Laurel does from Vampire Survivors, allowing the player to negate a certain amount of damage. And of course, the charges are regained over time, just like the Laurel. Immortality isn't the only thing that the player gained, they've also gained their own stats. Now, currently, these stats don't do anything, but in the future, things like general damage, defense, speed, and magnet AoE size will be a thing. And one of those paths that will likely benefit from these stats is yet another new addition, the Magnet Room. And in case it weren't already obvious, the Magnet Room is basically the attractor, but from Vampire Survivors. It will constantly suck nearby sun drops towards the player within range, and while I used a general distance check here, I'm not exactly sure if a collision circle would be better for performance. If uh, anyone knows, please leave a note in the comments. Anyway, let's look at one final addition made this session, which was also the most complicated to put together. The plant turn makes its return to the game, but instead of simply being a light source, it's now taking on the role of the Santa Water from Vampire Survivors. Just like in Vampire Survivors, every few frames a lamp crashes into the floor, uh, expelling an area of uh, like sunlight <laughs> to damage any enemies foolish enough to step in it. To pull this off required coding an entire sequence without the use of any actual variables. So basically, when the plant is added to the player's roster, an additional array is added to the data array created for the entry. This array within the array holds data for the timer, the amount of lanterns thrown, and the max lanterns that must be thrown before the sequence goes into a cooldown to eventually repeat the process. It was a complicated process that upon further reflection, I realized may have been unnecessary. I don't know why I immediately turned away from using structs when implementing the passive plants. I think mostly due to the fact that uh, passives work a bit differently than the active plants do. If, for example, the cherry bombs are trigger based, so a simple timer is all that's needed. But the, the plantern is a sequence that requires multiple timers to execute you know, the proper behavior. So using structs would have made the code more legible, but in the end, the functionality would have still been just as complicated. But we may return to the process in the future, however, as you know, my brain is kind of exhausted from the rest of the project, so I may not be thinking straight at the moment. And speaking of timers, the switch to the timer classes really did screw things up. It mostly slowed down gameplay too much. And this is due to PvZ being uh, far slower in gameplay speed than Vampire Survivors. So even cutting times in half still made gameplay too slow, which will have to shorten times even further, but ultimately I'm not currently a fan of the Switch. 
It's one of those ideas that like sounded good on paper, but the execution leaves a lot to be desired. Generally speaking, however, a lot of this was set up for future episodes. I've learned my lesson from past experiences, and so we should have a much easier time implementing the uh, stats this time around. And the goal is to introduce leveling to the plants to make them stronger and more effective over time, while also giving players the freedom of placing plants in formations that help them level up further. And future editions will also reintroduce plants to our project with either translations of their PVZ versions, or a hybrid that mixes in a feature from Vampire Survivors some of which will affect the player's stats. So, fingers crossed that everything continues going according to plan, because I think that it's shipping up to have quite the potential. And, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on these developments and additions, so please leave them in the comments. Also, if you enjoy these videos and want to help me keep making them, consider subscribing to my Patreon. But with that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.